Ladies and gentlemen, the new clan boss Hydra is officially coming. Some of the uh, content creators behind the scenes here were getting t-shirts and trying to figure out why they were getting leathers on their t-shirts. Well, we all figured it out here. This Reddit post anyways figured it out. I'm sure these guys figured it out. I haven't gone and looked at the chat today. But basically, the long and short of it, guys, is Hydra Boss is coming. Hell Hades, Deadwood, YST, Ash, and uh, I think RRDD is like Ray Brush or, or somebody. I forget exactly who RRDD is. I'm sorry. But these guys all received a t-shirt that had a leather on it. The leathers spell out Hydra. If you don't know Hydra, it's gonna be the three-headed clan boss, basically, that gets added to the game. New type of boss, we should be getting new rewards, new mechanics. It is supposed to be, basically, the biggest type of dungeon boss update we've ever had in Raid. That's what it was pitched to us as, essentially, behind the scenes. As far as I was aware, it was actually already created in, in Raid, like, forever ago, and, uh, I mean, they said it was, so I don't know what else to say about that. So now it's coming to the game, basically, okay? Here it is, exciting, I love that. Also, we're getting more news today that we're gonna be talking about, okay? Check this out. Look at this, there is a new patch note. If you go to the patch note, what's in the patch notes? I'm gonna break this down for you. First and foremost, two-factor authentication. Not gonna read this in its entirety. It's very self-explanatory. If you don't want your account to be hacked, which is, has a plethora of, of going ons in this game, add two-factor authentication. Hacking is happening all the time on these accounts, trust me. XP, Barrows, and Feasts. This is where we get into the interesting part of today, okay? Take a look at it. Feast, instantly take your chosen champion to rank six. Doesn't matter what rank they are. You can have a one star. Instantly, for example, if you have a rank three, level 30 lane with a feast, you jump to rank six, level one. Automatically just like that, okay? So this is going to be available, obviously, from purchasing it, so it will be a pay-to-win mechanic, but it says it's also gonna be available in tournaments and events. Now, there's the Barrows, which instead of taking you to the max rank, takes you to the max level. I don't think these are a big deal. They're mostly gonna be used, I think, on level 50s, taking from people one to 50, to then five-star chicken them to 60, and the one to 60 is normally done by like doing Minotaur scrolls with them, plus just using them in dungeons and stuff. You don't really need to level somebody to 60 before you use them. So I don't think people are gonna be using too many Barrows for that, but this will save a lot of free-to-play energy, time, and effort. I also think this is a good focus of the way we do this game. Reason being, it's because this game is primarily focused on hero acquisition and changing up your teams, which comes down to shard pose. This game is not about trying to beat Dungeon 20, it's about beating Dungeon 20 in like 15 different ways with your different teams because you're just having fun and trying out your roster. I think this game is well beyond the point of just being a hero collector game where you try out your heroes and be in the sandbox. That's basically what this game is boiled down to at this point. And honestly, I'm becoming more and more okay with that sandbox theorem. It's fun just to try out all these different heroes and collect the new heroes, and I think that's sort of what they're going for. And as they add things, Things like this, I only see this as helping. I don't, this game is already pay to win. I don't understand where we're gonna have a confusion about that. So separating the free to play from the wells, that ship has sailed forever ago. Having the ability to be able to maybe give one or two of these every other month as a free to play is still gonna help us out a ton in terms of just getting the characters up we want to use. If we get a couple free ones of these, it's still a big deal. I like this, that's how I see it. I'm seeing a lot of negative, opinions about this, okay? I'm sure there's negative stuff related to it. I'm at the position where looking at this as a free to play, I think, okay, Wells are now gonna have more level 60s than me, but that's not the problem. The problem is Wells have way more heroes than me. They have the better heroes than me. They have more gear than me. And I don't see this as giving them more heroes, more gear, etc. I I just don't. I see this as leveling stuff the Wells are literally already gonna be able to do. I don't know if you've seen Wells Tavern's account, but they normally have a shitload of brews. A lot of times they have all the heroes ready they already want to use. I don't I, I don't really see negative side of this, but I'm willing to listen to the community's opinion on this one and understand why I'm seeing some negative feedback about this. I actually am feeling positive and I hope this is going to be a good change for free to play is really what I'm hoping for that they get the occasional ones. I'm also hoping that this is a way to maybe fix the daily login issue. We've had a, a sane amount of complaints about the sacred shard and five star chicken being replaced. I would be okay with a five star chicken being replaced with a feast, obviously. That's much better than a five star chicken 
Put that in there. Come on, double up the Cleopatra shards. And one of the things, put the feast in where the other five-star chicken is. We'll put it to bed. Let's just do it. Let's get that in there. Moving on here, champion battle fixes. I'm not going to read all these. Essentially, these were bugs. I will say the most primary one that I noticed. Um, they also slipped in a uh, buff here. Lilia Death Siren now revives correctly without any delay when she denies an enemy revives attempt and revives herself with her death hold passive. Sneak that one in a little bit. This is actually a pretty good change for Lilia. Like this a lot. There's also an issue that makes Samlash slightly worse, which is that before she used to do ally protection even while dead. <laughs> and uh, now that does not happen. So keep that in mind if you have a Samlash survivor. All in all, this update for me is actually kind of fire. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be mad about the opportunity to get a free rank, rank 6. I'm just not as a free-to-play if that can happen. If they don't make these accessible at all, I'll hate it. If they add them in the clan shop or something, level 15 plus, I'm going to hate it. But it's the implementation of this that could be quite good. The other part we obviously have to talk about as we move on here is, guys, Hydra Boss. So Hydra Boss is... What I believe, and I'm gonna take a stab at this, is more than likely going to be a multiple affinity boss, meaning each different head has a different affinity and you have to fight mechanics with each one of these affinities, meaning each head is gonna have some sort of different mechanic that you have to beat. And if you don't beat all three of them simultaneously, you'll get wiped. That's what my guess would be if I had to look at it. That way they require you to have a plethora of affinities of heroes, even within the stuff that we know is all good. For instance, I don't know, Unkillable or something. So I could see Hydra definitely hitting through Unkillable. One of the heads could, for instance. I could see Hydra putting speed downs or randomly removing turn meter to stop things like uh, turn, like actual speed uh, uh, timings of it. I could see them doing that. In my personal opinion, I'd probably prepare for a Hydra that is not gonna be solvable, AKA more random, um, something that is more than likely not going to allow teams to cheese it. That is what I would think. I don't think that they like the Unkillable. We've seen them nerf the Unkillable a multiple of times, and I'm surprised the Unkillable in its current iteration is still something they even allow in the game. I'm not saying it's completely OP or busted. It's just surprising to me that's a mechanic they allow. So for that reason, um, you probably want to prepare for Unkillable more than likely not being a thing, and you probably want to prepare knowing that this Hydra head's probably gonna have multiple affinities. Hopefully this isn't something where they implement it in the clan versus clan, where what we end up having to do is fight the Hydra versus each other or something. Hopefully this is something we can do every day. Hopefully this is content that's gonna be implemented in terms of actual casual viability. That is what I'm excited and hoping for. And I, I would assume that is what the audience is hoping for as well. Let me know what you think about the Hydra. What do you think the boss mechanics are going to be? What do you hope it has? What do you hope it does not have? Because I'd be curious about that. And of course, let me know about your opinion about the XP barrows in Feast. Keep in mind, I'm not chilling out for this one. I just don't see the huge negative side that I'm seeing in comments some other places. I love the rage, as you guys know. I'm just not mad about this one, so I'm trying to be reasonable. That all being said, I love you. And I'm going to go uh, test out Seven Nights 2. So you can catch me on the live stream where I'll be testing that, as well as on the second channel where I'm going to post a video about that one if you care about that at all. Love y'all, and I'll see you on the next video.